Hi, thanks for tuning in this week. Hope everyone has been doing all right. We're going to continue our study today from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Last week we talked about, uh, we closed up last week's discussion talking about how without love everything's empty. We've been talking about that more excellent way that Paul talks about in verse 31 of the previous chapter, but we're ready for 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, if you'd like to follow along with us. 1 Corinthians 13, and verse 4, and we're just going to go through these one by one. It says, love suffers long. It's talking about love. It's talking about how love, how love conducts itself, and especially there in Corinth, how does love treat, how does love treat a brother in Christ? That's really the question, because there were divisions there in Corinth. They were not treating one another um, spiritually. First Corinthians 3, Paul says that he could not speak to them as mature, because they were still babes in Christ. They were still carnally minded, because there were strifes and, and divisions among them. So here he's, he's going through and he's talking about love, and he's talking about how we ought to love our brethren. And it starts off with love suffers long. And I have a feeling, you, you might just think about a, a verse, this is 2 Timothy chapter 4 at verse 2. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2, it talks about being long-suffering. In 2 Timothy 4 verse 2, it says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and teaching. You convince, rebuke, and you exhort with all long suffering and teaching. In 1 Corinthians 13, when it says love is long suffering, that does not mean that you overlook sin. That's not what it means. It means this is a growing process. And a lot of times you have to be patient. You're not patient with your rebuke of sin. As, and what I mean by that is you do not put off rebuking sin. If your brother sins, you rebuke him. But you have to be patient with them. As, as, they, as, as they need to repent. Love is long-suffering. Love suffers long. How do you treat your brethren when they have not been kind to you? When someone has not been loving to you, how do you treat them? That's the question. Love suffers long. And not only does love suffer long, love is kind as it suffers long. This is not give them the cold shoulder and don't talk to them for weeks or months or years at a time. That's not, that's not being long-suffering like the Lord wants us to be long-suffering. Love is long-suffering, and it's kind. The Lord was kind to his enemies. The Lord was kind when people despised him. The Lord loved us even when we were enemies. How do we treat our brethren, who hopefully are not our enemies, but maybe there's some sort of strife or division? How do we treat them? Love suffers long, and it's kind. Love does not envy. When you love, some, when you love someone... You do not envy anything that they have. Here they were envying each other's spiritual gifts and perhaps other things. If you love someone, you do not covet what they have. You do not want to take what they have. You want the very best for them. If you want the very best for someone, if you consider others better than yourself, how does that leave room for wanting what they have, for envying what they have? If you want what is best for them, then you won't envy anything of theirs. It says that love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. It's the idea of parading yourself at the expense of your brethren. The Pharisees, they did all their works to be seen by men because they thought they were better than everybody else. When you parade yourself, you think that you're better than your brother and you're puffed up against your brother. Well, if you love them, you don't think that you're better than them. If you love them, you don't want to elevate yourself at their expense. If you love them, what you want to do is you want to serve them. You want, you want to bring them up. You want to edify them. And that's not what was going on there in Corinth. They weren't wanting, they weren't wanting to serve each other. They were wanting to parade themselves at their brethren's expense. Verse goes on and says that love does not behave rudely. Okay, just very simply, love does not behave rudely. How we conduct ourselves, how we, how we talk to our brethren, how we think about our brethren. How do we talk about our brethren when our brethren are not there? Love does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. 
We consider others. We look out for each other's interests. Okay, we look out for each other's interests is what other verses in Scripture say. Love does not seek its own. Love is not provoked. When someone, when, when you love someone, when you love someone, and maybe they don't love you like they should, okay? And they do something, they do something that hurts you, okay? The question is, how do you respond to that? How do you react to that? Are you going to get into a tit-for-tat relationship? Are you going to try to one-up them on wickedness? Or are, are you going to understand you're going to, and, and if you love them, you're not going to let them provoke you. You're not going to let them provoke you under wrath. You're not going to let you're not going to let their hatred make you hate. You're going to love them and you're going to do your best to help them. You you're going to look out you're still going to look out for them. You're still going to be your brother's keeper. It says that love thinks no evil. Literally love does not bear records of evil. Namely, you don't hold grudges. You don't bear a record of evil. You don't start keeping you don't start keeping score of people's trespasses, okay? You rebuke them. And if they repent, you forgive them. You forgive them. You need to have a spirit like Jesus Christ. You need to have a spirit like Stephen. Remember as Stephen was stoned, you remember what Stephen said? Do not charge them with this sin. That's a hard lesson to learn, but it's a lesson that we need to learn because that's what love looks like. It says that love thinks no evil, but it goes on and says, that love does not rejoice in iniquity. Love does not rejoice in sin. Love does not overlook sin. That is not what true love looks like. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. What love does is it rejoices in the truth. And that's where we need to remember what all of the spiritual gifts were for. The spiritual gifts were for the revelation of the truth or the confirmation of the truth. Okay, the, the, what this is talking about is that, namely, all of these gifts have been given, and, and we're still in the context of talking about these, these various spiritual gifts. All these gifts have been given, and the question is, are you, are you going to rejoice in what God has revealed? Are you going to abide by it? Okay, you know, part, parts of the Bible, people love, to, people love to apply. Other parts of the Bible, people say, I got no time for that. What we've got to do is we've got to take the whole thing. We've got to take the whole thing and apply it to our lives. Love rejoices in the truth. It's not a smorgasbord. We don't get to pick and choose. We love the whole thing. And that's what love does, is love rejoices in the truth. As we rejoice in the truth, and as we try to help our brethren, as we love our brethren, and as we try to abide with our brethren by God's word in the Lord's body. Hope you've enjoyed this study. We'll pick up here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 next week. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out our website. We have a lot of things on our website, and we would love for you to, to check those out. Hopefully you'll be edified by them. God bless you. Keep studying. Tune in next time.